Meet Kevin has posted a response video to his DUI charge and DUI drama that's going on. And I gotta say, it is so bad. Throughout the entirety of the video, he's just kind of justifying drinking and driving, which is kind of the dumbest thing you could do for someone who, like Meet Kevin, who is in a current case about drinking and driving. So going out and making a video saying, you know, well, it's not a big deal to drink and drive if you're under the, the limit or you do this and do that and kind of making excuses for it. It's really not a good look. Hey everyone, me, Kevin here. I have the flu and I'm hoping to provide you an unedited, just sort of raw talk video here on the fact that I got arrested for allegedly driving under the influence. So even just this opening saying allegedly driving under the influence is that that's what's charged for him. Uh, but that's pretty important because later in the video, he literally admits to drinking in that night and then driving, but then just saying that he was within the legal limits. So he admits that he drank that night, but then saying it's alleged that he drank and drive, but you can't have the two. The two can't be true. Both can't be true. You can't not drink and drive if you actually did <laughs> drink and drive. I don't want to make this video. This is really bad. It doesn't look good for me, my, my, my courses, you know, we have the seed coupon code expiring this week, uh, this weekend, uh, we're upgrading the website and it expires this weekend. You know, we, we, we've, we raised $20 million for my, uh, real estate startup, which if you're an accredited investor, you can learn more about at househack.com. So right off the rip, not even a minute into the video, you know, he's got to promote his courses, make sure that you know that you can give him money for some random courses and say about his house hack and do all of this stuff that has nothing to do with his DUI charge. I don't know why he's talking about it, but you know, gotta promote those courses. Every single video, gotta promote them. Look, I'm not gonna make any excuses. I just wanna really start with that. Drinking and driving is bad and it shouldn't be done. I can't say I'm sorry because I really don't think I was impaired. Uh, I honestly think I was probably a 0.01. So literally right here, right after he said that it's alleged that he drank and drive, he pretty much admits that he drank and drive, saying that he 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 didn't feel like he was impaired. But the only way that you could even be have a chance of being impaired is if you drank. So you are you are admitting right there that you did drink on that day that you drove. So it's not alleged drinking and driving. You did drink and drive, but you're trying to say that you're in the legal limits, which is just kind of dumb. I don't know why people would go down that route. I don't know how this is his defense. And no one can look at this and say, well, you know, he drank, but he was in the legal limits to drive after. I don't think anyone is going to look at that and buy that and say, you know what? That makes so much sense. I, I love when people drink and then assume that they can drive. So I don't think this is a very good starting response for him in the beginning of his video to literally admit that he was drinking and driving, but to say he was in the legal limit. I, nobody wants to see anyone drink at all and drive, regardless if you say you're in a legal limit or not. It's not illegal to drink and drive. You heard that right. Mothers Against Driving heard that right. They know this. Everybody knows this. It's not illegal to drink and drive. However, in most states, it is generally illegal to drive when you are deemed intoxicated, which is usually verified through a blood test, urine test, or breathalyzer test to see if you're at or close to a 0.08 blood alcohol content. So maybe his defense is kind of saying drinking and driving isn't illegal. Maybe that's the hill he's trying to die on, which it sure you can say it's technically not illegal, to drink some and then drive if you're in this legal limit. But I don't think anyone morally would look at that and say, well, if you're drinking, regardless of if you're drinking one drink or 15 drinks, you probably shouldn't drive. Even if you have one drink, you should be planning on not driving. It's just the normal thing to do. It's just how you should be thinking. You shouldn't go out thinking, I'm only gonna have one drink, I'll be fine to drive. You should go out thinking, I'm going to have one drink, I'll Uber back, especially in a world with insane amounts of things you can call. You can get Ubers, taxis, Lyfts, you can have friends drive, DDs, you can have a lot of things at your disposal where driving after you've drank is not a, not ne a needed option. Personally, I think this creates a lot of blurriness. See, I could have had two drinks four hours before and be at a .05 or 0.04, <clears throat> and then I could, four hours later, leave and go drive somewhere else. And now you're at a 0.01. See, there's the blurriness there that he's trying to throw in there. Uh, I don't think it's that blurry. I think you should have basic rule. 
don't drink and drive. If you drink, don't drive. It's pretty easy. It's not that hard not to do. Uh, but he says this blurry and this blurry line. And oh my God, where's the legality? It's basically just don't do it. Also, the numbers that he's saying, I mean, he's just making up numbers. He's just saying two drinks, 0 0.05, 0 0.04, four hours later, 0.01. I mean, you can make up all the numbers you want. Obviously, everyone's going to be different. But that's why there's just a general thought around this that just don't do it. Just don't do it. You shouldn't have to think, well, if I have two drinks and then four hours later, it'll be a 0.05 to a 0.01 to legal limits to be able to drive. Just don't do it. Why go through the headache? Why deal with all that headache? Just don't do it. It's very easy. But now I have to deal with, you know, reputational damage and people like trying to email sponsors and be like, you should cancel me, Kevin, because he got charged with a deal. It's like, oh, how vindictive are you people? I mean, like- This might be the only thing in this entire video that I could firmly agree with Kevin, or at least somewhat agree with him, that maybe don't email sponsor. That just seems super obsessive to me. If you're going out of your way to see someone do something and going out of your way and emailing sponsors to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take away this sponsor. It's just weird. It's like super obsessive. If the sponsor didn't like what someone did, they're gonna drop them. If they don't like the image that that person's putting on, they're gonna drop that person. You don't have to go out of your way and email and do all this stuff. If whatever they did, the sponsor doesn't like, the sponsor's gonna drop them. And I, I think my advice, uh, obviously number one is just don't, right? But number two is you better make sure you drive mega, 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 mega safe. And just don't drive at all if you've had alcohol, but try to leave as much time as possible from when you've had alcohol so that you're as low as possible. Like you wanna be as close to zero as possible. I don't think this is having the effect that he thinks it does talking about it. Uh, it's very simple. You don't have to advertise and say, well, my first advice would be don't drink and drive, but if you're going to do this, it's just simple. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's simple. There's no, no do this if you end up needing to, because you never end up needing to. You don't need alcohol to survive, so you don't need to drink and drive. So if you're going to drink and drive, you're already in the wrong. The very simple answer is just don't do it. It's, it's very easy. It's probably harder to drink and drive than it is to just simply not drink if you know you have to drive. And this is especially bad for him on a video where he has a court case about this, where he is saying, going in depth on getting around drinking and driving. That's not like the message you want to put out is here's how you can drink and drive to get around this. And so if you can, you can do it. You're in a court battle right now. This video, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets taken down and his lawyers are livid that he put this out there because it's it, so much of it is making excuses to drink and drive instead of saying, just simply don't do it. We always said is, like, if you feel like you're 0.01, drive like the steering wheel has a needle coming out of it. Like, imagine this is like a needle. And if you crash, like, yeah. And so you're just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he just keeps making the worst and worst points. More and more excuses and things to do and tips and tricks to drink and drive. Simply don't do it. But even in his example here, driving scared is just as bad if you're gonna drive scared you can put other people in danger just as bad because you shouldn't be driving scared you should be driving normal and when people are drinking and driving the problem isn't that you are going to injure her or kill yourself that would be the consequence of your own actions the problem is that you could kill somebody else on the road who has nothing to do with the decisions you made but because of the decisions you made have consequences on them. That's where the problem stems. Not necessarily that it could do something to yourself, but that you could affect somebody else who is completely innocent. In California, you're legally allowed to request blood or breathalyzer test. <laughs> this means they give you breathalyzer, blow, 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 peep. Okay, prints out a little breathalyzer thing. <clears throat> there have been studies that these things are inaccurate. So like I went into this whole DUI thing thinking like, oh no, 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 like those things are rigged. So Kevin goes in to talk about how he doesn't want to do the breathalyzer because it's rigged and it's not good enough and he wants to do blood. And in California, you can request blood. But the only problem is uh, he wasn't in California. So it doesn't matter what California says. He was in Florida. So it matters what the Florida laws are. And I don't know what those laws are. And if you're there, you probably don't know either. But if you're there and you didn't drink or you don't have any reason to 
go to jail for a DUI. I mean, you shouldn't be scared of a breathalyzer. And for the majority of the rest of the video, he's just kind of on about the video footage and putting the footage out, his own footage and the Tampa, Florida uh, Police Department footage. And it's not much commentary over it other than, you know, a couple of times he talks here and there. But there's one clip that is pretty bad that just really makes Kevin look like he's he's just guilty in this whole thing. Um, what I'd like to do is just check your eyes, okay? I want to make sure you're okay to drive. You okay with I, that? I don't consent to anything. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, you understand if you if you uh, if you don't comply and you, you don't do the field sobriety exercises that I'm asking you to do, you're forcing me to make a decision to arrest you or not arrest you. So right there is kind of the smoking gun of this whole thing. This this one clip of the officer just simply saying. I want to check your eyes to just see if you're all right to drive. And him denying that, saying, I don't want to do that. I'm not doing it. Don't care. But if you're so good to drive and you're perfectly fine, why wouldn't you just do it? Chances are, if you're so fine, he does whatever tests he does. And he says, all right, yeah, you're you're good to go. Your friends are the ones who must be blackout drunk. Uh, you pass the test. You're good to go. You can clearly drive and send you on your merry way. Maybe give you a ticket for the stop sign you ran. But instead... You said, no way, I'm not doing that. It's almost as if Kevin is in the back of his mind, knows that he's guilty, knows that he's doing something wrong, that he's in the wrong. And instead of trying to do what a normal person would do in this situation of just do the test and the cop says, oh, well, you're not really drunk. You have a nice night. He He's trying to prepare for this like later court date instead of preparing in that in that moment to just go back to driving. It's almost like he's not trying to give over more evidence to a cop because he knows he's in the wrong instead of just simply doing the test and then passing them if he's so good to drive. So all in all, not a good response from Kevin. I don't think any of the points he tried to convey are good points. A lot of the video is spent just making excuses to drink and drive and trying to say it's technically legal to drink and drive it's not a good look for him it's not a good look in his court case about drinking and driving it's not a good look for his dui there's there's nothing really positive about this video to take and it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up taking this video down in a few days after his, his lawyers got to be livid that he put it out there and at some point maybe realizes wow i said some pretty dumb things but the bad time for him is the internet is forever and there's going to be re-uploads and people saving this video. It's it's done. You already posted it. You might as well leave it up. Wouldn't surprise me if it gets taken down though. That's going to do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. We're over to 1,000 subscribers and see you guys in my next video.